If you're new to Facebook ads, setting up a retargeting campaign can be one of the easiest ways to boost your ROAS. This means you'll be directly targeting people who have been to your website before but did not convert into a purchase. Facebook actually lets you track this behavior, giving you access to a warm audience of people who have already engaged with your brand, making them far more likely to take action. So in this video, step by step, I'll show you how to build a high converting retargeting campaign that brings these people back and turns them into paying customers. And if you stick around until the end, I'll also quickly show you how to build a retention campaign if you're selling something that can be bought multiple times. Hey everyone, it's Axel here and we're just gonna get right into it. So for this video, I'm gonna assume that you have three things done. The first one being that your pixel is correctly set up. If you don't have that already set up, feel free to watch the video in the description below. I put a link there. I'm also gonna assume that you have a cold campaign set up targeting new customers. And finally, I'm going to assume that you already have a landing page that is correctly working that you're going to drive the traffic to. So what we're gonna be doing here is building a retargeting campaign. So this is specifically the people who have been to this website before on this water sports company landing page and who did not take action. So specifically, the people who clicked on one of my ads in the first campaign I built in my previous video hit my landing page and did not convert into a paying customer. And what we want to do is grab those people, put them into one campaign specifically and target them to bring them back a second time, hoping that they are more likely to convert the second or third time that they hit the landing page. So the first thing we're going to do before we build a campaign is we're going to have two audiences built. We want to make sure that we have our retargeting audience, an audience of people who have been to our website in the past 180 days and that's the audience of people we are going to show our ads to and then I'm also going to build an audience of people who purchased in the past 180 days and that's because I want to exclude those people that way once they do purchase they don't see the ads anymore that way we're not wasting money on our ad spend and I'm also going to be using that audience on the retention campaign which will be later on in this video which essentially targets people to buy a product multiple times so what we're going to do is go on the left here and I'm going to select audiences and we're going to build two different audiences I'm going to build the website viewers first. So what I want to do is select create audience. It's going to be a custom audience, specifically website and click on next. And from here, it's going to ask me for which data set I'm using. So specifically, I'm going with this data set right here. That is the data set where my Facebook pixel is currently set up from. And under events, I want to click this drop down and select people who visited specific web pages, specifically in the past 180 days, and make sure that my URL contains the URL to this landing page right here. So I'm going to copy and paste that here. And so what I'm telling Facebook right now when I'm building this is whoever has been to a URL that contains this, so essentially whoever's been on this landing page before in the past 180 days, that's the type of person I want to be included within this audience. And that's who I'm going to target within my retargeting campaign and use later on when I'm building it out. From here, I just have to name my audience. So it makes sense to name this something like SWS, so the company name, website, visitors 180. That way it's super clear. And from there, I'm going to create my audience. Next, I'm going to build my second audience, which is an audience of people who have purchased from this website. So I'm going to click on select on create audience and click on custom audience again. Make sure this is a website source and click on next. I'm going to select the same data set and under events, I'm going to select something different. I'm going to select purchase in the past 180 days. From there, same thing. I just have to name this audience. So it makes sense to name it something like SWS purchasers 180. That way it's super clear and click on create audience. And now that is the first part of the video done. I have both audiences built. I have an audience of people who have simply just been to this website before and I have an audience of people who have purchased from this website before both in the past six months. So now it's time to go back to our ads manager here on the left and click campaigns and start building out this campaign. So for this campaign, I'm going to click on create and this is going to be a sales objective and I'm going to click on continue. And from there, the first thing it's going to ask me is to name my campaigns. I'm going to call this SWS retargeting campaign. That way it's super clear what the campaign is actually doing. The campaign objective is sales. That's what we selected before. I'm going to scroll down and set a campaign budget, a daily budget of $10. Now for the budget, chances are like my last video is you want to select a daily budget where you're essentially just telling Facebook spend this amount of money every single day. However, the amount you should put in is important. You don't want to overspend on retargeting. And that's because on retargeting, you are targeting an audience that is much smaller than your cold audience. So you want this to be set at a much lower amount. I like to set my retargeting budgets between five to 10% of my regular campaign. So in my previous example, 
example, I had set a budget of $50 for my cold campaign, so it makes sense to spend only $5 for this retargeting campaign. So once the campaign budget is set, I'm just gonna make sure that my campaign bitch strategy is set to the correct one, which is on highest volume, so that's good too. I'm not gonna play around with the A-B test. I'm gonna make sure my audience segment reporting is correctly set up. So here, I have my engaged audience where I'm labeling my website visitors in that engaged audience. And I'm also specifically telling Facebook my existing customers are the purchasers in the past 180 days. If you're not familiar with this section, I'll put a link to a video in the description below explaining this, but make sure you have this set up correctly as it makes a pretty big difference in the results you'll get from your campaign. Next, it's going to ask for a special ad category. I don't have any, but if you're either in the financial space, employment, housing, or social issues, make sure you mark that so then you don't get your ads banned or your account suspended. But if you don't fall into one of these four categories, feel free to just leave it unticked and click on next. And now we're gonna start building out our ad group. Okay, so now we're building our ad set and this is where all the targeting is done. So this is where we're going to tell Facebook, only target the people who have been to my website before, that audience I previously built a couple minutes ago. The first thing I'm gonna do is name my ad set. This is where I'm going to name it pretty much the exact same thing as my retargeting audience. So I'm gonna call this website visitors 180. That way, by just looking at this ad set name, I can see exactly that this ad set is targeting those people specifically. The conversion location is on the website. The performance goal is to maximize the number of conversions I'm getting from my Facebook ads in this data set right here and the conversion event being purchased. So this is super important. Make sure it's not set to add to cart or view page or initiate checkout or anything of the sort. If you're doing D2C, SaaS, e-com or selling courses online, anything where someone can make a direct purchase off the website, make sure that you're always optimizing for that final step, which is the purchase event. Your ROAS will typically be a lot higher if you do things this way because it's the final goal of your campaign. Next, I'm gonna keep going down. I'm not gonna add a cost per result goal for now. In terms of budget scheduling, I want this to run continuously, so I'm not gonna set an end date either. And now I'm just gonna scroll down to my audience. I want this to target people in the same three locations that I built my first campaign in, which are Squamish, Whistler, which is a neighboring city, and the city of Vancouver, the one in British Columbia and not the one in Washington. So I'm gonna select that. So I want these ads to only be shown to people who are around this area locally. And that's because the first campaign I built is only targeting these people as well. Next, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on further limit the reach of your ads and click on switch setup right here. And now it's gonna give me a few different options. Now I don't wanna touch any of this stuff except for where it says custom audience. So right here, what I wanna do is click on this pencil icon and search up website visitors. And now I can see that that audience I previously created comes up. So what I wanna do is select it. And now what happens is I now have an ad set, which is only going to show ads to people who are part of this audience and in these locations. From there, the next thing is the placements. I'm not gonna touch this. I believe that if you're new to Facebook ads, the best way to approach placements the first time is just to select all of them. So I suggest you do the same. And from there, we can just click on next and start building our first ads. Like in my last video, I'm just gonna name my first ad image one because I'll be testing three different creatives and all three of them are gonna be photos. So I'm gonna name them image one, two, and three. Next is the identity. So essentially it's asking you which Facebook business manager or which Instagram account or Facebook page is actually showing these ads. Specifically, this is going to be from the Squamish Winsport Society page and Instagram. So I just wanna make sure that that is correctly selected. From there, I'm going to make sure my ad is a manual upload, a single image or video. And from there, it's going to ask me for my website URL. I'm trying to bring people to this landing page right here. That way they can buy one of these memberships. So what I wanna do is copy the URL of this landing page and paste it in there. That way, whenever someone clicks on my ad, they end up right here. From there, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on set up my creative and upload an image ad. So this is essentially where I'll be uploading my creative, my headline, my call to action, as well as the primary description. So I'm going to upload three different photos at once because I'll be testing three different creatives and I'm gonna open all three of those and just let that load. So for my first creative, I'm gonna select my first image, which is this one right here and click on next. And here is where it's going to ask me for my text. So my primary copy, which which is ready to go right here. And I'm gonna copy that right there. And this is essentially the piece of copy that shows up on top of the creative in your ad. Now I could make a whole video on how to write a convincing piece of copy and I'll save that for another video. And I just assumed that you just already had that ready. Moving on to the headline, this shows below your ad as a bold piece of text right beside the call to action. And for my headline, I'm going to write down buy your summer membership today. And from there, I'm going to select my call to action, which is going to be learn more. If you're doing specifically e I highly suggest that you select shop now. You'll probably get less clicks out of it, but you'll get a higher quality traffic and most likely a higher ROAS than if you were to click learn more. If you're doing anything else, universally learn more is always a good pick as well. So I'm gonna click on learn more and click on done. Scroll down. I'm not going to select any event 
details. I'm not gonna fiddle with the languages either or the tracking and I'm just gonna click publish. And so what we have now is a retargeting campaign right here that specifically targets only people who have been to my website before and we're showing them only one ad. What I wanna do to improve this now is to have more creatives and different styles of photos to test within this campaign. That way I'm not just assuming that this photo alone is going to perform best since different creatives often perform on different levels. So what I wanna do is duplicate this ad twice. That way I'm testing three different photos in the same retargeting ad group. So to do that, I'm going to select this ad, click on duplicate and specifically quick duplicate. And I'm only gonna change two things. The first thing I'm gonna change is the name of the ad. And the second thing is the creative itself. So to change the name, I'm just gonna remove this and change this to image two. And now I'm gonna scroll down until I find my creative. I'm gonna click on edit, change media. And instead of having the first photo selected, I'm gonna change it to the second one, click continue and click publish. And that's my second ad done. What I wanna do now is just repeat this process a third time. So I'm gonna make sure it's selected, click on duplicate, quick duplicate. I'm going to rename this ad now to image number three, scroll down, click on edit, change my media, select my third photo, click on continue, click on publish. And now what we have is a retargeting campaign, which has an ad set targeting people who have been to my website in the past six months. And I'm testing three different photos for that. The one thing I have to mention is make sure that this is only turned on if you want it to be on. By default, the second you publish a campaign, Facebook will automatically turn on your campaign and start running the ads and spending your money. So if you're not quite ready to turn your ads on, make sure you leave this paused until you're ready to do so. And so now that you have that done, your retargeting campaign is entirely done. And so you should have two campaigns now in your account, one campaign, which is targeting brand new customers, and then a retargeting to match that, that targets people who have been to your website before previously in the past six months. Now, in some cases as well, you might be selling a product that can be bought multiple times, also known as a replenishable product. This is very common in e-commerce. In a case like this, people who have bought from you before are a lot easier to sell to a second time rather than targeting a new customer. And so when this is the case, building out a retention campaign, targeting people who have already bought from your website before and targeting them to buy a second time can often be a very good move in order to boost your ROAS even further. So to end off this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to build a retention campaign, which targets previous purchasers from your website. But before I show you how to do this, if you like this video so far, be sure to give me a like and a subscribe below. That way you're updated on all my future videos to come. So to build a retention campaign, it's super quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our entire retargeting campaign. And we're only going to change two things. The first one being our naming conventions. And the second thing being our targeting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by selecting this campaign right here, clicking on duplicate and click on quick duplicate. And now you can see that I copied and pasted the entire campaign. So what I want to do is rename the campaign from retargeting campaign to retention campaign. That way we can easily tell the difference. And we're going to do the same thing within our ad set. Because in this campaign, we're not targeting just the people who have been to our website before. We are specifically targeting people who have purchased from the website before. So what I wanna do here is change this to website purchasers. That way it's super clear. From there, what I'm gonna do is scroll down and change my custom audience. So in my audience segment right here, what I wanna do is select this custom audience and click on the pencil. And I'm going to click X on this retargeting audience. And I'm going to look for my purchasers audience that we previously built in this video and select that. And so now what we have is we have an ad set that is currently targeting people who are in one of these three locations and specifically only people who have bought from our website before therefore targeting repeat purchasers. And that's all you need to do. From there, you can just click on publish and your retention campaign is now done. The one thing you just wanna pay attention to is how much you're spending on this campaign. As you can see right here, I'm currently spending $50 on my cold campaign as well as $5 and $5 on both the retention campaign and the retargeting campaigns. Typically for retargeting, I like to spend about 10% and same thing for my retention campaign. So at this point now, you should be fully set up for success on your Facebook ads. You should have two campaigns if you're selling a product that can only be bought once and you should have three different campaigns if you have a product that can be bought multiple times. So as a recap, a broad campaign, which is targeting new customers and they should be spending about 90% of your budget. You should have a retargeting campaign, which is targeting people who are familiar with your brand, who have yet to complete a purchase and they should be spending roughly five to 10% of your total budget. And on top of that, you should also have a retention campaign, specifically if you're selling a product that can be bought more than once. And this one should be targeting repeat purchasers, spending about again, five to 10% 
of your total budget. So hopefully you found this video useful and easy to set up yourself. If you'd like me to build one of these campaigns for you or just manage your ads for you, feel free to book a call with me using the link in the description below. That way we can have a chat. And if you have any questions about any of the steps in this video, feel free to drop that in the comments below as well. Other than that, I hope you found this video useful and that you get a high ROAS out of this and I'll see you on the next one.